A better future with precious metals featuring Monix and the world-renowned commodities research firm, the CPM Group, led by Jeffrey M. Christian. Hello, my name is Sean Brasney, sales director for Monix Deposit Company. I'm here today with Jeffrey Christian. He is managing member and founder of CPM Group and one of the many analysts there at CPM Group. Uh, thank you for being with us today, Jeffrey. It's always a pleasure to be with Monix. Uh, of course, we're talking about our better future with Precious Metals Report, as CPM Group uh, is the author of. And you know, kind of getting into some activity that we've seen in the market lately on August 9th, you know, we saw gold take a, a dive to the downside somewhat significantly in the overnight, almost by $100 per ounce. Uh, it has recovered quite a bit of that move, and, and the pullback has also affected silver back down into that 2220s area uh, on August 9th with a little bit of a bounce out of silver since then. You know, one of the things I've been hearing from investors is you know, the IMF was planning on selling some gold to help out Africa. Uh, Jeffrey, you had some great intel on, on that rumor that might help clear that up a little bit if you can share that with us. President Macron of uh, France uh, suggested, I guess back initially in May and then more forcefully in June uh, around the time of the G7 conference, he was talking about the idea of providing debt relief for African governments. Uh, and this is something that's gone on for decades. Uh, there was a whole uh, round of debt relief for highly indebted uh, developing countries in the 1990s. And, you know, 30 years later, they're still having a lot of troubles. So he was suggesting that they increase the allocation of uh, special drawing rights to African countries within the IMF to give them uh, debt relief and greater borrowing power. And specifically, he was talking about a $100 million deal uh, where the IMF could sell some of the gold that it owns um, in order to raise money to help these countries. Now, that could send a little bit of a negative shock to the market because they hear, oh, the French government's talking about the IMF selling gold. But if you stop and take a breather, $100 million dollars is about 55, 56,000 ounces. It's less than two tons of gold. It's not a lot of gold. To put it in further context, earlier this week, Planeteer, which is a company that's a startup company that has no profits yet uh, in the internet space, Planeteer took $50 million of its treasury and bought gold. It made a big stink in the market and there were any number of perma bulls who say, hey, look, here's a private corporation putting part of its treasury into gold. Well, $50 million is, what, 27,000 ounces? It's less than a ton of gold. It's important, but the reality is that companies and governments buy and sell gold all of the time. So $100 million, 56,000 ounces of gold sales from the IMF wouldn't be a big deal in the gold market. And because they would be going through the IMF, it would probably take years and years and years of discussion to reach an agreement to do it. The last time the IMF sold gold was probably about a decade ago, and it was after probably a decade's worth of discussions. So I, you know, I think that the news that the president of France suggests the IMF sells gold can spook the market, and maybe it was part of the, the amalgam of factors that caused the gold price to be weak in June, July, and August. But I don't think it's particularly significant to the actual price of gold. Also, the price got down to that 1670s area again. Looks like the third time it's been able to test down there. Uh, really some of the lowest prices we've seen in gold since you know we've started this uptrend. With that being the low that the market tested, is, is that going to be somewhat of a floor, or, or do you still see us having buying opportunities uh, somewhere down a little closer to 1700 or just below? It absolutely is the floor. And, you know, as you know and your clients know, we were saying that the gold price could drop down and test that 1680 floor that it tested twice, once in mid-March and then once on the last end of March. And we should point out, in mid-March, it was there for six days, and in the end of March, it was there for two days. So we, we had been saying that we thought that the gold price could sell off 
into August, once we got behind, uh, beyond the first week of August, and, and that it could go down and test at 1680. We were a little surprised that it happened, you know, in the sixth trading day of, of August, uh, but we weren't surprised that, uh, that it happened. That said, I wouldn't be surprised to see it drop down and test 1680 again, possibly around the 26th or 28th of August during the Kansas City Fed's uh, Jackson Hole Conference because they'll be allowed to talk about the Fed, the strength of the economy, and the probability that the Fed undertakes some tapering of its monetary accommodation. And that could spook the gold market again um, and, and cause the prices to drop down. But we think that, and what we've been telling our clients and your clients, is 1680 or 1700 in August is a great buying opportunity as a long-term accumulator of gold. If the price doesn't sell off and you wind up buying at today's 1780, that's still a good price at which to buy gold from a long-term perspective because on a longer-term basis, it looks like gold prices probably will be rising from here for the next several years at least. Of course, the Palantir organization is buying gold to, you know, protection, let's say, and, you know, put some of their reserves into gold. It makes sense for uh, the average investor to still consider this, of course, as well. Uh, that pullback with silver, you know, coming back, you know, we were in a 24 to $28 range for quite a while. Y the yearly range going back to July of last year really is the 22 uh, to 28 range. So we seem to be testing the bottom part of that zone. Uh, do you think this is going to be somewhat of a low now and, and we should get aggressive and accumulating down here? Well, we had thought that the silver price could drop down to around 22 in August. It got below 23 on that spike down on the on the 9th of August. It's back up. It's testing 23 as we speak uh, today. And again, we wouldn't be surprised to see another spike down in the last two weeks of August, possibly as low as $20, $22 an ounce. But again, we still think that this is a good price level uh, for longer term accumulation. It's yeah, been a while since we could get into the 22s. I have been talking to investors the same. Uh, 22 or lower, you really have to pay attention to silver. For, for, for platinum and palladium, you, you have been spot on. Um, I think every time we've talked about platinum and palladium, you talked about the softness in palladium and expected that to happen. Uh, but more focused on platinum right now because of where it's at. It's under a thousand per ounce. I think we tested 956 at the low and uh, hanging out around the 970s right now. Uh, I have been a, a big proponent of platinum under a thousand. Um, can you give us some information that still shows you know under a thousand is the place to buy? Uh, our view is that under a thousand is a good uh, place to buy. You know. We were accurate in, a, uh, in many ways with platinum, but one of the things that we got wrong was we thought the price would come down and find support around $1,035, maybe $1,000. And over the last few weeks, it actually has broken below that. That just makes us that much more bullish on platinum uh, because the price is, in fact, below $1,000. you are looking at seasonal weakness in fabrication demand. You're looking at seasonal weakness in investment demand. Longer term, you're seeing investors showing greater interest in platinum, both in terms of ETFs as well as um, coins. So our expectation is that the silver price, uh, the platinum price, rises above a thousand dollars, probably in September, uh, maybe late, a little bit later, probably though in September, and that it starts moving back up into that. $1,000 to $1,200 range or the $1,100 to $1,200 range that we've seen for most of this year. This year, for the remainder of this year and into next year, and then we, we think that the, as time goes forward, you'll probably see platinum prices rise further because you are seeing the shift away from palladium toward more platinum in autos. Uh, and you're also seeing a shift away from palladium to platinum on the part of investors. I also saw your seasonal chart for the PGMs and it looks like coming into October, November is a, is a seasonal strength in the market. You know, these lows might be giving investors an incredible opportunity before that strength comes into the market. Yeah, there's seasonal strength that toward the end of the year, it tends to be re reflecting several things. One is increased fabrication demand from the auto industry. 
Another one is inventory building. A lot of fabricators will rebuild their inventories if they let them run down toward the end of the year. They do that for tax purposes and also just to be ready for the following year. And then a lot of investors also take the end of the year to sort of revise their portfolios and say, what should I be doing? So those three factors tend to coincide November, December, and you tend to see some strength in platinum and palladium at that time. Yeah, I'm going to put a little teaser in here for our viewers that I know we're working with you on a platinum report coming out here in the near future uh, where we can get into a whole lot more details. But I also want to remind our viewers that we're having a hard time sourcing and finding one ounce bars for platinum. Coins have been very hard to find. Still have the, the bullion bars uh, available, of course. Uh, but there is a little bit of a shortage, and we've seen some premium coming into the contract, into the physical metal, excuse me, going all the way out into January. So, so these lows are something important to keep an eye on. And also to remind our viewers that CPM Group was telling us about the potential for some of these lows and that they would happen coming into August. So uh, do, don't forget the CPM Group reports and their special advisory reports. Uh, and when you have a moment, please call Monex, talk to our account representatives, and get your uh, better future for precious metals.